Today, Intel is in serious trouble, NVIDIA is doing some terrible things, AMD confirms our worst fear with a sliver of good news, and AMD is making a massive change. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. It's a tale as old as time. Someone gets a little too big for their britches and they get clocked into next Tuesday. And that's what I have for you today. It was just a few years ago that Intel was bragging about having $3 billion to disrupt competition and that AMD's Ryzen chips were glued together. They thought they were too big to fail. Fast forward to today and Intel is hemorrhaging money, being forced to lay off thousands of workers, pausing their dividends, and possibly even ending their foundry dreams. Unfortunately, things are getting even worse because today we have a story from Reuters that claims Qualcomm is looking to buy pieces of Intel's chip design business. They apparently have big interest in their client PC designs but are also looking at all of the company's design units. Now this comes from two unnamed sources and they haven't approached Intel yet according to this but Intel's CEO is apparently set to meet with Intel's board to discuss trimming operations to save cash. Basically, while it's not not over yet, Intel is in some serious trouble. And if you're as excited about the newest tech and PC hardware like I am, learn how it all works from the same place I do with today's sponsor. Brilliant, the only place I trust to learn computer science. Want to learn how GPS works? They've got a course for that. What about large language models that power modern AI? They've got that too. Thinking in code? What do you know? They have it. Basically, they've got it all, and they teach you in the most unique way. See, they have these engaging puzzles that not only make learning fun, but also let you get in there and do it yourself. So no more falling asleep in class or trying to memorize a bunch of stuff. And the best part is that when you visit my link at brilliant.org slash gamermeld, they're offering my viewers a 30-day free trial. So if you haven't checked it out yet, there's nothing to lose. Plus, when you use my link, you'll get 20% off your annual premium. Once again, visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld for 20% off and a free trial. Next up for today, NVIDIA is doing some really messed up crap with their newly announced GPU. Specifically, the new RTX 4070 that comes with GDDR6 instead of GDDR6X. If you remember in that video where I discussed the announcement, I showed where NVIDIA claimed it offered similar performance to the regular 4070. And at the time, it looked like they were using that as a pretext to sell the new version for the same price as the GDDR6X version, even though it was clearly worse. Of course, it likely is is almost as fast, but we should at least get a small discount here. Well, it looks like that won't be the case, as Newegg recently listed the ASUS Dual RTX 4070 with GDDR6 memory for the exact same price as the GDDR6X version. In fact, they have a wide edition with GDDR6X that's even cheaper, so it's essentially more expensive than the GDDR6X version, but it actually gets even worse, because according to video cards, NVIDIA is not requiring board partners to list the memory version on the packaging, meaning you may not even be able to tell which version it is if you buy it in a store, which is another thing I noticed when the packaging started coming out. So much for not wanting to confuse people by having two GPUs with the same designation. Ultimately, I think this is a crap decision that I really hope NVIDIA changes. Next up, AMD just seemed to confirm a huge leak and more. In a new story from Tom's Hardware, they got a chance to interview AMD's Senior VP and General Manager of the Computing and Graphics Business Group, Jack Hoon, or Hein, I'm really not sure about that last name, but during it, they asked him about the rumors claiming AMD wouldn't target the high end for their next-gen GPUs. And in his answer, he essentially confirms it. Quote, so my number one priority right now is to build scale to get us to 40 to 50% of the market faster. Do I want to go after 10% of the TAM or 80%? I'm an 80% kind of guy because I don't want AMD to be the company that only people who can afford Porsches and Ferraris can buy. We want to build gaming systems for millions of users. So there you have it. The leaks were right yet again. And while that definitely isn't a bad decision to make, personally, I think it's more of a cope. I mean, there's no reason they can't do both. Challenge NVIDIA on the high end, but also have a strong mid to low end lineup. Not to mention that AMD was already working on something, but according to the rumors, RDNA 4 was simply a major pain, especially with it being this MCM chiplet beast. And AMD even mentions the next high end GPU being chiplet based. 
Which brings me to the good news here. At the end of the statement, he mentions, quote, We'll be using chiplets, which doesn't impact what I want to do on scale, but it still takes care of enthusiasts. And this makes me pretty confident he meant a multi-chip module that actually uses two compute chiplets. Not what RDNA 3 did with chiplets, where they just separated the memory cache, but kept all of the cores on one chiplet. It would basically mean multiple GPUs and one, like what was shown in the leaks. So at least from this, it sounds like we won't get a high-end GPU from AMD until at least the RX 9000 series. Though, if they can bring some great price-to-performance products to the mid-range, I would definitely still call that a win. And lastly for today, AMD just announced a massive shift for future GPUs. This one comes from the same interview with Tom's Hardware, but in a second article. In it, AMD confirms a huge change to their underlying GPU architecture. For those who don't know, AMD built all of their GPUs off of one architecture from 2012 to around 2019. That was called GCN, or Graphics Core Next. When it was replaced, AMD made a pretty big deal about separating their gaming architecture called RDNA from their computer architecture called cDNA. This would allow AMD to better optimize their graphics cards for each specific market. Well, it looks like that hasn't exactly worked out for them because in the interview, AMD confirms that they're moving back to a single architecture now called uDNA for unified. In the interview, he says, quote, Going forward, we will call it uDNA. There will be one unified architecture, both instinct and client. We'll unify it so that it will be so much easier for developers versus today, where they have to choose and value is not improving. He didn't explain when this change would happen, but given he mentions uDNA 6, I would assume that it comes after RDNA 5. Either way, I'd argue this doesn't look good because it makes them look like they're flip-flopping, especially when Nvidia's CUDA has been around for years now. Still. I'd ultimately say to go with whatever works, let's just hope they don't decide to change things yet again. So while that does it for today, what do you think about AMD trying to focus more on mid-range GPUs for next gen and then that possible MCM GPU for after that? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!